This is Dr. Weintraub's study. You know, again, it's nice to be able to cite the man who was just here. So he took a group of non-demented people. Minimum mini mental score was 28, okay? So small range, 28 to 30. The mean was 29.2, I believe. Mean age 63, 71% male. They've been ill for an average 6.4 years, but they are not demented. Their prevalence of psychosis was almost 20%. Visual hallucinations was the most predominant one, then auditory, and then the illusions, and then delusions. So again, their prevalence of psychotic symptoms, I should say actually the, the prevalence of the types of psychotic symptoms are quite different than schizophrenia, where predominantly we're gonna see mostly auditory hallucinations, then delusions, then visual hallucinations, and then other things as well. When he did a multivariate analysis to say, what are the things associated with the development of psychosis in this non-demented group of patients with Parkinson's disease, there was no association with the equivalent doses of their dopaminergic drugs. None. Zero. So 15 years ago, if I had given this talk, I would have said, we're not quite sure if this is a substance-induced psychosis. And in fact, there used to be this old term, which some of you may have heard of, called levodopa psychosis. Anyone ever heard of this term? It's an old term. You don't hear it anymore because it ain't true. We've now recognized that this is a disease-independent problem, not a treatment-related iatrogenic issue, okay? Yes, do we sometimes recognize that as we change people's dopaminergic therapy, their psychotic symptoms may change, but it is not induced primarily by the treatment, it is induced by their disorder. And as people start to get a greater burden of their pathology, predominantly cortical pathology, we think, that's when they get their psychosis.